Circus peanuts might just be the most confusing candy ever. They're shaped like a peanut and they're bright orange, so why do they taste like bananas? Very few foods that were originally popularized before the end of the 19th century remain widely consumed more than 120 years later. Like once popular food items such as turtle soup or milk toast, circus peanuts have mostly vanished from society. And that makes sense, as circus peanuts don't really seem to align with modern sensibilities. There's a near infinite number of candy varieties and brands available in modern times after all. But that wasn't the case back in the 1800s, when the circus peanut was introduced to the world. They say that beggars can't be choosers, and back in the day, consumers were limited to whatever penny candies were locally available. And if you didn't like it, you went without. Of course, understanding why people ate circus peanuts isn't quite the same as understanding why they were invented in the first place. Because very little about the circus peanut makes much logical sense. When you see a food item designed to resemble a peanut, you likely expect it to taste like a peanut. Similarly, if you eat a candy that's bright orange, you likely expect it to have an orange flavor. Confoundingly, though, circus peanuts don't taste like either peanuts or oranges. They randomly taste like bananas. That's confusing for the human brain and may help explain why circus peanuts aren't as popular as they once were. Thanks to some combination of genetics and environment, most of us develop a general set of expectations for how food should taste and feel based on its appearance, smell, and texture. Beyond the puzzling flavor profile offered by the circus peanut, their generally soft and chewy texture isn't always neurologically appreciated either. Between evolution and human experience, when we see a peanut-shaped item, we expect it to be crunchy rather than soft. In other words, the sheer design of circus peanuts is simply too much for many people to wrap their heads around. It's a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside a peanut? One theory why circus peanuts aren't as popular as they used to be comes from their packaging. In an age where urban legends about dangerously modified Halloween candy run rampant, the loose packaging of circus peanuts may be a deterrent, especially when it comes to giving out the treat. Circumstantial evidence also suggests this may be true. For instance, other somewhat archaic candy brands have remained prevalent during the October holiday thanks to individually wrapped fun size options such as Tootsie Rolls, which have been a candy staple since 1907. It's it seems some manufacturers are beginning to change their ways, as at least one modern distributor now offers individually wrapped circus peanuts. Whether or not this leads to a circus peanut comeback, though, remains to be seen. Of course, one of the most obvious potential reasons for the decline of the circus peanut is that a lot of people just think they're gross. Banana-flavored sugar within a marshmallowy texture is simply a turnoff for many people. And that leads to poor word of mouth. After all, it often feels like circus peanuts are one of those near-mythical foods that everyone in the world has an opinion on, but virtually no one's actually tried firsthand. That could be in part due to those packaging issues, but those who have actually eaten circus peanuts actively discourage others from making the same mistake. As one Redditor wrote, I think we can all agree they are undeniably the worst candy readily available in the United States. The taste is abhorrent, and the texture reminiscent of a chalky marshmallow left out in a rainstorm. Circus peanuts. The most disgusting of all the candies. With hype like that, it's not hard to see why they have fallen out of favor. The power of nostalgia can be staggering to consider. After all, what else but an overarching longing for the good old days could make the world long for Crystal Pepsi? One of the only verifiable reasons why circus peanuts haven't completely disappeared appears to be nostalgia. Perhaps an individual has their own fond memories of personally consuming circus peanuts way back in the day, or of doing so with an older relative during childhood. Maybe a person is driven by the desire to purchase and eat a candy that was popular well before they were born, like circus peanuts. Whatever the specific type of nostalgic pull, that interest in occasionally reliving the past seems largely responsible for keeping circus peanuts on store shelves. Strangely, it seems as though the candy's longevity may at this point be self-perpetuating, as the reason it's become nostalgic is because it has become synonymous with nostalgia. Which helps explain why candy purveyor John Prince told USA Today, few candies have survived as long as circus peanuts. In 2006, Steve Kerr, the VP of Operations for Spangler Candy, one of the last circus peanut manufacturers in the nation, dropped a truth bombshell on the world when he revealed that he doesn't actually like circus peanuts. It's like learning that Santa doesn't like Christmas. It's little surprise that many people dislike circus peanuts as it's literally a matter of taste. But to discover that the folks responsible for bringing the old-timey treat to the masses also don't like them is a bit weird, especially since it suggests that they make circus peanuts just 
use for the money. And that opens up a whole other can of worms, such as, there's money to be made making circus peanuts? Given the tiny market share circus peanuts have in the current candy world, that may be even more inexplicable than the banana flavor. It's revealing to consider how many gloriously delightful candy brands are available to the modern consumer. Reese's, Twix, Snickers, Almond Joy, Butterfinger, Three Musketeers, you get the picture. And candies aren't even the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the seemingly never-ending options at one's disposal. Of course, the abundance of rich chocolate, fruit, or caramel candy varieties that have been introduced since the creation of Circus Peanuts illustrates one of the very reasons they disappeared over time. There are simply better options. Whether or not Circus Peanuts are the absolute worst candy on the market in the 21st century is a matter of opinion. But it's unlikely that many, or any people, would say that Circus Peanuts are their favorite candy. The candy game is just too fierce a competition these days. Some might even say cutthroat. However, did you survive the fall? I've been in a dump truck full of Circus Peanuts. Objects that exist in the world are supposed to make sense. If they don't, we just go completely ape. There's a presumed order to things, after all, and a specific logic that dictates what we should expect to see and experience throughout life. Of course, the sheer fact that Circus Peanuts are a real food product, and not something a preschooler imagined and then molded out of Play-Doh, is confounding for a multitude of reasons. And we cannot find exactly why the Circus Peanut got its shape, how it got its name, how it got its flavor, or how it got its color. And then there are the basic questions, why don't they taste like peanuts? Is it so much to ask that a product both named and and shaped after the basic shelled legume, one that masquerades as a nut, actually tastes like a peanut? Why color it orange? And why banana flavor? That last one may actually have an answer, believe it or not. According to Andrew Zimmern's Field Guide to Exceptionally Weird, Wild, and Wonderful Foods, rumor has it that the banana flavor results from a freak banana oil accident. Circus peanuts, the result of a freak accident? That's one rumor that is all too easy to believe. If you believe the tale told by General Mills regarding a certain magically delicious breakfast cereal, the most important culinary creation resulting from Circus Peanuts' century-plus history has nothing to do with the candy, and everything to do with the marshmallow bits found in Lucky Charms, which are known as Marbits. It appears experiments involving a bowl filled with Cheerios topped with chopped Circus Peanuts led to the development of Lucky Charms. That does perhaps beg more questions than it answers. For example, why on earth would someone chop up circus peanuts and put them in a bowl of Cheerios. But the fact that the greatest legacy of the circus peanut is the accidental creation of a much more beloved product says something about the status of circus peanuts, as does the fact that none of the marbits found in Lucky Charms are actually circus peanuts. Blue diamonds? Okay. Purple horseshoes? Sure. But apparently orange banana peanuts were a bit too much of a stretch. It's a well-known fact that nothing in life worth doing will be easy. Of course, while we accept the notion that worthy endeavors require both time and effort, some excessively challenging tasks don't necessarily count as worthy, like, say, the production of circus peanuts. In fact, despite being one of the least popular candies on the market, when it comes to how circus peanuts are actually made, the process is almost laughably difficult. Circus peanuts are reportedly enormously difficult to make properly, and have even been described by Spangler Candy as the most most difficult candy, production-wise, made by the company. More than anything, it seems ensuring the final product retains an appropriate amount of moisture is the trickiest part, since threading that needle is absolutely crucial to creating the Circus Peanut's unique texture. Additionally, the surprisingly time-consuming preparation process for making Circus Peanuts includes a 24-hour drying period in a temperature-controlled room, though what exactly the correct temperature is for Circus Peanuts remains unclear. Circus peanuts trace so far back that you might think they're a relic from the Roman Empire. But while that's not the case, it is true that people know very little about circus peanuts, due in part to the fact that circus peanuts have been very poorly advertised for decades, and that has helped hasten their decline into relative obscurity. In fact, it's difficult to find a single modern ad for circus peanuts, at least not one from within the past 50 years, if that's what you define as modern. More than that, it's not entirely clear whether the handful of ads floating around from the mid-20th century were for the candy itself. It appears just as likely those retro advertisements were for actual peanuts, as in, you know, real peanuts, not orange banana marshmallow concoctions, rather than circus peanuts. Either way, it's impossible to deny circus peanuts have lacked any sort of consistent or prominent marketing since before the moon landing. So would some kind of hip, viral ad campaign suddenly make circus peanuts the hottest thing around? Well, if there's one thing we've learned from social media trends, it's that literally anything could become popular if 
if it becomes a meme first. There's still hope, Circus Peanuts. Did you know that prior to the 1940s, Circus Peanuts were sold as seasonal candy in the springtime? You didn't? Well, perhaps that's because there's nothing inherently spring-like about Circus Peanuts. In fact, they were only a spring snack due to preservation limitations of the day, which were later resolved. You would think that would have helped sales, but the lack of a specific season or holiday seems to have potentially hamstrung consumer interest in Circus Peanuts over time. Without an obvious kinship with Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, or any other holiday where candy is prominently pushed upon society, Circus Peanuts haven't had that one solid lifeline to keep them perennially relevant. For comparison, just as many individuals may disdain candy corn as circus peanuts, but candy corn remains a Halloween staple, thanks to its color scheme and the fact that it's seasonally appropriate given that real corn is often harvested in the fall. It's tough to say whether circus peanuts would be more popular if the world associated them with a major holiday, but given the inexplicable popularity of other old-timey candies like Necco wafers, which have long been associated with Christmas, it certainly couldn't hurt. Maybe something like Arbor Day is free? It's just inexplicable enough to fit the confusing world of the circus peanut.